So today I'm going to be talking about my bookish buzzwords and buzzkills. I've seen a couple different people do this video and I kind of like the idea. I didn't come up with like exhaustive lists. I'm not doing like 10 of each or anything, but I figured I would just do five buzzwords and three buzzkills. So the buzzwords, these are just words that if I see them in the description of a book, I'm probably more likely to want to read that book. And then the buzzkills are words that if I see, I won't be as likely to like have an interest in the book. That was enough of a rambly intro. Let's just get into it. So my five buzzwords in no particular order, because I mean, so the first one I have written down is New England. I live in New England and I love the atmosphere of New England, especially like in the fall. I know that's super basic and like generic, but New England in the fall is gorgeous. So if I find a book that's based in New England, I like if I see that it's based in New England, I am like, there's like a 90% chance that I'm going to pick up that book. And that's kind of why I end up reading a lot of books about witches and stuff, because they all take place in Salem. So I mean, the fact that witches aren't necessarily like my favorite thing in the world kind of goes against this one. But, you know, not all books that take place in New England have to do with witches. So yeah, if I see a book that's, that takes place in New England, I am much more likely to pick it up. The second one I have is romance specific, obviously. But if I see that something is a hate to love story, I'm gonna pick it up because, <laughs> because hate to love is like my favorite romance trope of all time. So just seeing that phrase on the, in the description of the book, I am just going to pick it up. Anything that implies hate to love is basically like an auto read for me because I love hate to love stories when it comes to romance. Number three that I have written down is anti-hero and also anything that implies that there's going to be some sort of redemption arc for a villain. That is my favorite thing ever. I love like when villains turn into heroes. It's like my jam. I love it. So anytime I see either anti-hero, which I know isn't exactly the same necessarily, but anytime I see anti-hero or like a villain, something about a villain getting, being redeemed in some way, I'm much more likely to pick up that book. The fourth one is assassin. I don't know why. I swear I'm normal. But like, Something about assassins just really appeals to me. I love books that have assassins in them. So anytime I see a book that involves an assassin, especially if the assassin is the protagonist in the story, as opposed to like the villain, uh, yeah, I'm more likely to read it because I love assassins. And then the fifth one and the final one that I'm going to talk about in this video is Beauty and the Beast. Anything that I see is like a Beauty and the Beast retelling, I'm gonna pick it up and read it because Beauty and the Beast is like my favorite thing. I don't know why. It was one of my favorite Disney movies growing up and now I just like, I just got into a habit of any time I saw, like anytime I see a Beauty and the Beast retelling, I just like, I have to read it. So if anything says like Beauty and the Beast anywhere on it, I'm gonna read it. I wanna read it, so. Yeah, so those are my five bookish buzzwords. And now I'm going to give you three bookish buzz kills. I'm only going to do three because uh, buzz kills is like negative and I don't want my video to be negative. So we're going to stick to three for the buzz kills. And then to keep it positive, I'm actually going to give you examples of each that I actually enjoy. So it's not even necessarily that I won't enjoy these things. I'm just a lot less likely to pick up a book or watch a show in the case of one of these, if this word is included in the description. So the first bookish buzzkill word that I have is heist. I am 100% turned off of any book that says it's about a heist. I don't know why. I'm not a fan of heists. I didn't like Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> like, I'm just not a fan of heists. And it could be the best thing in the world and I won't read it because it says it's about a heist. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, especially recently, you might be saying, hey, Sarah, what about the lies of Locke Lamora? Yeah, I know. So the lies of Locke Lamora a lot of times is sold as a heist story. After reading the lies of Locke Lamora, I will tell you, 
in my personal opinion, it is absolutely not a heist story at all. But I put off reading The Lies of La Flamora for so long because it kept getting sold to me as a heist. And I was just completely turned off by it. I hate not... I hate is really strong. I am just not interested in stories that are about heists. I'm I'm just not. So when I actually read that and it turned out like when people finally beat it into my head enough that I would enjoy it if I just gave it a chance and I finally did give it a chance, I loved it so much. So really, like if you have bookish buzzkill words that make you not want to read things, like don't always take them at 100%. Like sometimes you should just give things a chance. The second bookish buzzkill word that I have is celebrity. In general, I don't particularly love books about celebrity culture and like, like musicians or actors. Something about it just isn't really that interesting to me. So again, I have an example that I actually did really enjoy. But in general, like, seeing that a book is about a celebrity won't, will make me less likely to pick it up. So the exception that I'm going to talk about with this one is Geekerella by, what was her name? Ashley Poston, I think. It was like a Cinderella retelling where this girl had this favorite show that she used to be really into with her dad. Um, and they were making, think like a Star Trek kind of almost. I think it actually was basically supposed to be modeled after Star Trek. So picture like a Star Trek type show and they're turning it into a movie or maybe it was a comic book series. It was some sort of maybe like a comic book or <laughs> I read this a while ago. I'm sorry. I think it was like a comic book or a book series or a TV show and they were turning it into a movie. And this girl didn't like who they cast for the main character in the movie. And things happen. So it was really cute. I enjoyed it. Honestly, I mostly read it for the Cinderella aspect and like the nerd aspect of it because and I don't think I even realized no no I definitely did know I'm pretty sure it's in the description that it involves like a celebrity but I think the good outweighed the bad in this case and that's why I picked it up and I ended up really enjoying it even though it involved a celebrity so that's that one and the third one is western so if anything refers to itself as like a western themed something I'm probably less likely to read it. So I haven't even started the Mistborn series yet but I know that the second era of Mistborn is supposed to be kind of like a western style and I'm already not looking forward to it because that just doesn't appeal to me. And if anyone can do it in a way that I will enjoy. It's Sanderson. I have faith in him. But at the same time, even something by an author that I really enjoy, I'm just not super hyped about because it says it's like a Western. <laughs> and I'm just not interested in that. Now, the exception to this one is actually a TV show. So this is a little bit of a cheat. It's not a book. But uh, The Mandalorian, the Star Wars show on Disney Plus. I love it. And not just because of Baby Yoda. I mean, a lot because of Baby Yoda, but not just because of Baby Yoda. And that's, so here's the thing. These books that I've included for my buzzkill words, I don't love because of the things. I love them kind of in spite of the things. So I'm getting kind of wrapped up in what I'm saying, but like, Basically, just because a book has something that you don't love doesn't mean you can't enjoy the book. So you should always give everything a try, even if it has a word that you're really not psyched about. And even if there's something in the description that you're just like, oh, I really don't like that thing. Maybe you should give it a try. If a bunch of people say it's really good and like you have a lot of reading tastes in common with someone and they really enjoyed it, don't count it out just because it has something that you don't like because you might end up really loving it like me in the lives of Aquamora. Please stay tuned for my top five reads of the year video if it's not already out. I have no idea what order I'm putting all these videos up in. I'm just filming a bunch of videos over a few days so but yeah okay I have rambled
way too much in this video. I've gotten way too excited about some of these things that I've been talking about. So I'm just going to cut it off here. Let me know what some of your bookish buzzwords and buzzkills are. If you have any, if you even know what I'm talking about. And if you don't have any, like sit down and think about it for a minute because it's really interesting. I bet you can kind of come up with some words that you've realized that books that you either love or hate have in common. And yeah, I just thought it was interesting when I saw people putting these videos up. I thought it was an interesting thing to think about. So yeah. All right, that's it for this one. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.